Hey folks, in today's episode of Code Club, at long last, we are going to post the visual that we made in the last episode of Code Club up to the internet so that everyone can see the beautiful visualization we've made indicating the level of droughtiness across the world over the past 30 days. To do that, we're going to be using GitHub. So I'm gonna start here in VS Code for today. If you wanna get a copy of my entire project, down below, uh, there is a link in the description to a blog post where you can go and get all the information you need uh, to download that. I've also got a video I'll link to up across the top of the screen here showing you how you can use that information to get caught up for where we are because I think you're gonna find what we do in this episode and the next to be pretty slick uh, and pretty cool way to disseminate our research. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by creating a new file that I'll call index.html. And here I'm gonna say, hello uh, world, right? And I'll go ahead and save that. We're gonna do more with this file before it's all said and done, but that's pretty good for now. I've got my terminal open now, and you can see that my main is red because that index file is not being tracked. So I'll go ahead and do git add index.html, git commit, and I'll do hello world. And then, oh, it doesn't like that exclamation point, so I will um, go ahead and do git commit hello world without the exclamation point. And then I'll go ahead and push that up to my repository. Coming over to GitHub, where I have my drought index repository off of my Riffimonis uh, project, you'll now see if I hit refresh that we sure enough have index.html. It has hello world in it. So we can use GitHub to host websites for us. If you go to the Riffimonis website, if you go to my uh, lab website, those are all actually generated and hosted on GitHub. We're gonna do something a lot like that, albeit a little bit different. We're going to use GitHub to host a website for us. So to do that, I'm gonna come over to settings here on the right side of the menu of my repository. And then down this left side where we've got the menu, the option for pages. This now is GitHub Pages is designed to let you uh, host your personal organization or project pages from a GitHub repository. And so I'm going to deploy from a branch um, and this is going to be my, my main branch. And then the branch that we're going to work off of is main and we'll do it from the root of the project. Sometimes people will make a directory called docs. I'm gonna put it in the root so that it's pretty easy to know where it is and to work with. Go ahead and save this. So this tells me that it's gonna be hosted off of riffamonis.org. So again, if I do riffamonis.org forward slash drought underscore index, I now have my hello world page, right? So the index that I had here in uh, the project root is being displayed and rendered here at Drought Index. So Drought Index is the name of the repository off of my Riffimonis account. Um, and if you don't have a custom domain like that, that's fine. You might have something that would probably look something more like riffimonis.github.io. Um, again, riffimonis.github.io, as you can just see, um, maps to riffimonis.org. So if you're like Sally Smith, you might have sallysmith.github.io as the URL. And then the directory that it's off of is the name of the repository. So in a case, again, this case, it's drought index. And then index.html is the page that is rendered when you go to that site, right? So if I did like index.html, again, it's the same thing. Very good. So now we want to improve upon this. So how are we going to improve upon this? Well, we are going to use our markdown to create an index.html file for us that includes our visualization. So I'll create another file that I'll save to be index.rmd. And this again, as you see, is an R markdown document. It knows that it's an R file. And so oftentimes when people work with R markdown, they're doing it within R Studio. We could certainly be doing that, but I'm doing something a little bit different here, right? So we're doing it in VS Code. And so we can start by putting in YAML. And so YAML is the header uh, that goes at the top of an R Markdown document. And so I could say title, and I'll say drought index 
for world author uh, and we'll do pat schloss i'll do email uh, address and i'll do pat at riffamonis.org and i'll do um, github repo and i'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, this url and plop that into there and then i also want to do output and i'll do html document and so what that means is that when we render this document it's going to output it as an html document you can also output it as a, a word document or as a pdf um, you can also do books you can also do slide decks all sorts of great things but we're going to do something simple with an html document okay so we'll go ahead uh, with that as the header for our index.rmd file i also want to insert my image right and so to do that we can use markdown and so to insert a static image we can use this exclamation point square brace and then parentheses uh, and inside the parentheses put the path to our visual which is in visuals world drought png so i'll do visuals forward slash world drought png save that and again that's going to insert a static version of that image now you might be saying well why didn't you use our code within the r markdown document to do this well i prefer to keep things separated as much as possible to make the computational load of each step as easy as possible right as you'll see we'll go through this and we'll try to make our web page as simple as it is look more and more sophisticated with each step um, if I were to kind of do all these tweakings of changing font sizes or changing margins or all these different things, then I would have to be regenerating the figure each time, and that would take a long time. Instead, if I generate the figure previously in the pathway, in, in the pipeline, um, I can then use that as a dependency to build out my index.html file. So we'll go ahead and save this. In my terminal, I need to install our markdown. So let's double check what environment we're in. We'll do conda env list we're in the base so let's go ahead and do conda activate drought and again if we do conda env list we'll see that we're in the drought environment and to install that to remind ourselves i can do mamba install hyphen c conda forge and that's the channel that it's going to look for the r markdown r package and for r packages they all start with r hyphen so we can do r hyphen r markdown like that and it tells us that everything's already installed. I think that's probably because our markdown comes with um, the tidyverse. Just to double check though, I'm gonna go ahead and inside of my environment.yaml file, in here, I'll go ahead and put r hyphen r markdown. Um, and I'm not sure what version um, it's using here. So I think what I'll do is double check things by coming over to Google and do conda forge r hyphen r markdown and click on that and we see that it's up to uh, 2.17 right so we'll go in here and do 2.17 save that and then the next time we burn down our environment and start it back up again we'll be sure to have that version um, i'm a little bit worried that it wasn't installed with tidyverse that i may have installed it accidentally along the way anyway We'll be in good shape there. Okay, so to render our index.rmd file, what do we do? Well, we can use R, and so R typically, when you run it like that, will launch us into R like so, but I don't wanna do that. So what I'll do instead is R hyphen E, and what that means is execute what follows in quotes, right? And so I'm gonna do library R markdown, like that. And then, so that's gonna load R, and the first thing it's gonna run in R is library R markdown. And then I can do render, and then in quotes, uh, and I'll do single quotes because I've got double quotes on the outside, right? I'll do index.rmd, single quote to close that, and double quotes to close the entire thing. And of course that outputs index.html, which we see here now. So if we look at index.html, this is clearly an HTML file, right? Um, and it's got all of the goodness of the PNG file um, in there as well. Um, and so I can do open index.html to open it in a browser. And there we go. We have a web page created, right? We've got our uh, visual. We also have a title and my name and all that other good stuff. 
So there's a couple things that I would like to do uh, to modify this further. I wanna get rid of that title and my name. Um, if anything, I wanna move my name down to the bottom and perhaps say like this visual developed by Pat Schloss, something like that. Um, and I wanna make the whole page black and I want the visual to really use the entire space of uh, the HTML page, of the web page, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's come back to our index.rmd file. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and create a code chunk. And so if you're not familiar with R Markdown, it allows you to combine output from code chunks that you run, um, as well as inline code with text and visuals and links and all sorts of stuff using Markdown, which is in some ways a lot simpler than full-fledged um, HTML, CSS. So I'm instead of putting in an R chunk, I'm gonna put in a CSS chunk. Inside this CSS chunk, I can define CSS code uh, styling for my HTML. There's also a way to have a separate file to provide the CSS, but I find it's easiest to have that CSS chunk right up in the top of my RMD file. So I'll start out with body. And so the body anchor defines the entire body of the web page. And so I'll then do background hyphen color, uh, and let's do black, and then we'll do color for the color of the text to be white with a semicolon there. And so again, we'll go ahead and rerun all this. Great, <laughs> trust me, we're gaining on it. We now have a black background to our um, web page. We also have the code chunk in here. And so what it's doing is it's echoing out the contents of this CSS code chunk. And so I can turn that off by doing echo equals false. Save that, go ahead and re-render it. And now that code chunk is gone. I don't quite know if there is an ID or a tag um, that is being used for uh, these, these titles and names. So if I right click on it for inspect, so what this shows me then is that for my title, it's got a class of title and for my name, for the author, there's a class of author. And so I can turn off the display on those two classes. So then back here, I can do dot author, comma dot title. And then within that, I can do display none. And that should turn off the display of my name and the title. So let's go ahead and try this again. So again, my name and the title goes away. Again, I just wanna point out that there's a lot of iteration that's going on here to make things look right. I certainly don't wanna be waiting a few moments for the visual to re-render itself. It's so nice that I've already generated that and that's just one more component to the overall web page. The next thing I'd like to do is to use the full real estate that I have across the web page. So I'll go ahead and right click on um, this to inspect. And if I look at the body, um, the nice thing is that as I hover these different anchors, uh, it tells me what basically that corresponds to by highlighting something over on the left side of the page, right? And so, um, Again, these were the, the tags that I just ignored, right? Uh, the title and the author. Um, and if I look here, uh, it's container fluid. By default, our markdown uses the bootstrap framework. So container fluid is part of that. Uh, main container is another class that we can modify. So again, I'll come over here and do main.main uh, container. And so then to main container, I'll do max hyphen width uh, and I'll do 100% with a semicolon at the end. Uh, let's get some spacing in here, save that, and we'll re-render it. And so now that uses the full real estate of the page. And what you'll notice is that as I shrink it down the size of the page, the figure shrinks with it. So that's pretty slick. Great. So the next thing I'd like to do is put some information in the lower left corner about who I am, how I generate it, and how people can get a hold of me. Also, I'd like to put in some information about the last time this page was updated. So again, I can come to back in here. So I'll say site developed by Pat Schloss. All right, and then I'll maybe I'll also add up here like last uh, updated on uh, 2022 10, uh, 17. All right, and Let's go ahead and see what this looks like before we take the next step. So we'll go ahead and render that. And so we can see last updated there. So it's um, our markdown doesn't recognize line spaces um, unless we force it to. So if I put two spaces at the end of a line, that should recognize that there's a line break there. And so sure enough, we now see that there's a line break at the end there. So I'd like to add the GitHub repo over developed and my email address over patch loss. 
So to go ahead and turn these into hyperlinks, I can wrap developed in square braces and then put parentheses to the right of it. And then my name, I can also do the same type of thing. So to get the address that we want developed to be linked to, I'll come back up here to GitHub repo. And then in here, we're going to use some special notation. Uh, and so we'll start with a back tick R and then after the GitHub repo, I'll put a back tick. And so this is an example of inline R code. Basically within this line of text, it's going to inject the output of running R. Now running R GitHub repo won't get us anything, but what we can instead do is R mark down um, colon colon and then metadata dollar sign GitHub repo. So this R markdown metadata will go up to the YAML. It'll identify the variable or the directive called GitHub repo. And then because that's all baked within this inline R code, it'll insert that there. So let's go ahead and save that. We'll render it and make sure it looks like we hope it would. And so sure enough, when I hover over developed, I see that I've got the right URL down there. Good. So we're going to do the same type of thing, but for my email address, right? And so here we'll do mail to colon. And then instead of GitHub repo, we want email address. And so we'll plop that in there, save it, render it, and it will be good. And so now you see that if I hover over patch loss, we get mail to pat at rifamonos.org. And like we saw before for developed. Very good. So the next thing I want to take care of is this date because I've hard coded the date in here. So to do that, we're going to do something a lot like what we did here with this inline R code. And to do that, we need Lubridate. So we'll put a code chunk in here and we'll do R for an R based code chunk. And I also want to echo equals false to not echo out the library Lubridate, right? So that's good. And so then here, I'm gonna again put in inline R code, which we've seen, I can do back tick R space and then a back tick. And so then within this uh, pair of back ticks, I wanna insert my function call. So I'll do today uh, with the open and close parentheses. So we do have the date, but we lost our line break. We've also got some messages up here at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and it looks like I only have one space here. Let's go ahead and put two spaces in there at the end of that last updated line. And then I'll come back up here and I can then add message equals false. That should turn off those messages being outputted to the web page. We now got rid of those messages and you can see that we've got our line break back in there. Then one of the final things I wanna do is let's go ahead and make this font a little bit bigger so it's easier to see um, and we're not squinting so closely to see what it looks like. To do that, of course, we'll come back down to our CSS and we have um, our body here. So because that's the only font on the page, I'm gonna embed my font size here into the body. And so I will then do font hyphen size I'm going to do 1.2 VW. So that VW is a way to dynamically size the text relative to the size of the viewing window. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll take a look at what that does. So I feel like that's a de decent size font. And as I rescale this, you'll see that the font here gets smaller with the size of the page. If I had used something like EM, then it would have been a constant size and it would have been that size even when it was this small. Um, like say when the size that you would see on like your phone, right? And so I like having that dynamic size of the text uh, for what we have down here in this footnote. So that looks great. I'm pretty happy with the appearance of all this. You know, one thing that I might think about doing, I'll go ahead and do that, is if I come back to code and if I look at my plot, then in here for this color, uh, for a gray, I had this uh, set of F5s. Um, let me get rid of this. I'm not sure what's going on there. So I'll go ahead and replace that white with my hexadecimal, save it, and let's see what we look like. Again, it's hard to tell the difference between that and white, but that color matches uh, the colors for everything else. And I'm okay with that blue color uh, for the, the hyperlinks. So now we want to go ahead and make a snake make rule uh, to render the index page. So I'll come down to the bottom here and do rule render index. And our input will have two inputs, right? So we'll have index.rmd, that needs to be in quotes. And then we also need our uh, visuals, the world drought PNG file. So we'll do visuals 
forward slash world drought dot png. Put that in quotes. I'll call this RMD and this my PNG. Good. And then um, our output will be what? That will be index.html, right? And so then I'll go ahead and grab this shell statement. So I'll have to modify this a little bit. I'll go ahead and copy this line that I've been running from the command line and replace this input um, R script. And instead of index.rmd, that works fine, but I'll alternatively go ahead and put in curly braces input.rmd, save that. And I wanna include this index.html back up here at the top. Go ahead and save that. And so now uh, we can do snake make, um, let's do hyphen hyphen dry run. It says everything's up to date. Um, let's go ahead for now and remove index.html. Try that again. And we see that it needs to go ahead and render the index as well as the targets rule. So we'll let it do that with hyphen C1. That all worked well. And again, if we do open index.html, we see the web page that we'd hoped would be there. Cool. So now we are ready to commit and push our changes up to GitHub. So again, if we look at what we've got, uh, we've got all this. I'm not totally sure what's going on with that .vs code. I don't think it's important. So I'm probably gonna add that to .git ignore. So let's go ahead and do that here. Um, and here I'll do .vs code forward slash. And again, if we do get status, we see all those things that need to be added and then committed. So I'll go ahead and do get, get add period, get commit, um, and then we'll do generate pretty um, index page. All right, and now we can do git push. So we can see that with the push, we now have index RMD and index HTML. And so we see the HTML that has been updated with the stuff that we just worked on. So that's good. If I come back over to my index file and I uh, try to refresh it, voila. Again, we're up at riffamonas.org slash droughtindex.index. Um, I don't think I actually need that index.html um, and that will represent, and that will show us our visual. So again, we have used our markdown to generate a web page that GitHub is displaying for us. Again, this is another benefit of making your code open and available and using great tools like GitHub is that we can use GitHub to post web pages for us. It's, it's really slick. Um, and we can use our markdown along with it to achieve that end. So this title is a little bit of a lie uh, because these data already are about a week old. And so the next thing that I wanna do is go ahead and re-kick <laughs> the snake make workflow to pull down fresh data and to start over and to regenerate this figure that is truly updated uh, for whatever day it is. Because ultimately what I wanna do is have this updated every day, but I don't wanna to have to do that every day. I wanna get GitHub Actions to do that for me. So that is exactly what we're gonna do in the next episode. I will show you how we can take the workflow that we've been developing with a few little tweaks here and there to get GitHub to refresh this every day at the same time every day so that we can check in the website and see what the current level of droughtiness looks like across the world and for my neck of the world. So that you don't miss that, please, please, please make sure that you've subscribed to the channel, you've clicked that bell icon, you've given this video a thumbs up, and by all means, if you like what we're doing, spread the word and please tell your friends about what we're doing. All right, take care and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.